Hey guys, this is Miss Letarius, and we're over here at the Mount Juliet Library. We're going to continue on our solar system series. Now, so far with the outer planets, the Jovian planets, we've done Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and we're about to do Neptune. But I thought I'd take a couple of minutes today and talk about the spacecraft that was responsible for sending us all this amazing information about those planets, and that's going to be Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Voyager 2 is going to be launched August 20th of 1977, and then 16 days later, its sister is going to be launched Voyager 1. Now, you've got to remember, if they were launched in 1977, they had to be built going all the way back to the 1960s. Now, we're spoiled. If we need some information, bam, we just punch it into a computer. This is what the computers looked like in the 1960s. They would go across a whole entire wall and they would make these god-awful noises whenever they started to make it. Computers were in their infancy. You know what, guys? You've got more technology in your cell phone right now than they had in developing the spacecraft for the uh, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. To, if you think about it, instead of using computers for the vast majority of the work that they did, they used these things called slide rules and some weird thing that we call pencil and paper. That's how they did all of their calculations. In fact, if you ever take a look at one of the very best space movies ever made, Apollo 13, take a look at it. Whenever the scientists have to do all their new calculations, they're doing it with pencil and paper. They're not even using calculators yet, okay? Now, in order to get Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 to get to the outer planets, they had to figure out a way to get through the asteroid belt. They had to plot the location of each and every one of the asteroids. Not today, but where they were going to be three to five years later when Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were going to be going past it. There are a gazillion different asteroids. Don't count them up. I counted them up last night, guys. And what's happening is you've got Voyager 1, Voyager 2 traveling through this asteroid belt at a speed of about 25,000 miles per hour. With all that debris, something the size of a pebble is going to be big enough to hit it and knock it off course. If you have something the size of my fist, it's going to destroy it completely. They had to calculate where each and every one of those asteroids were going to be three to five years ahead of time using pencil, paper, and slide rules. The fact that we got one of them through is absolutely amazing. The fact that we got both of them through is just beyond belief. It's a tribute to American technology at its very best. Okay, Voyager 1. What Voyager 1 did, guys, is this. It went around Jupiter, went around Saturn, used what we call a gravitational boost in order to continue its path. But then when it went around Saturn, it changed its direction, broke away from what we call the eclectic, and it went this way, and then zoop, went this way. And it now headed outside of our solar system. It's on its way to one of the nearest stars. It should make contact with those stars in about 40,000 years, give or take. Make sure you mark it down on your calendar. Now, Voyager 2 would do exactly the same thing. Jupiter, Saturn, but then it would continue onto Uranus and Neptune, okay? Pluto was on the other side of the sun, so they never took the time to try and go past Pluto. Now, where are these spacecraft today? 43 years later, both of these spacecraft are still functional. They are still sending back data from where they are in deep space to where we are over here on planet Earth. Both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 have broken through what we call the heliosphere. That's what you're seeing over there. Imagine a bubble around our whole entire solar system. That's going to be the limits of what we call the solar wind. When you get past the area where the solar wind dies down, that's called a termination shock. That means both of them are now outside of our solar system. What started as an interplanetary program is now becoming an interstellar program, which now creates a problem. What are you going to do with the people, the aliens that might come into contact with these spacecraft, okay? We've got to send them a message. And if we send them a message of like, hey, what's up? 
It ain't going to do a whole lot. They're not going to be overly impressed about that. So scientists got together and they tried to figure out an idea as to what we were going to communicate to the aliens that might come across the spacecraft. And they developed something that we call the golden record. And that's what you see over there. The first slide is going to show you where they mounted it on both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. And they also did that with the Pioneer series as well. And then the picture underneath is going to be the golden record. That golden record is a collection of different sights and sounds that were all designed to communicate about the diversity of planet Earth as well as the structure of planet Earth itself. <clears throat> now consider, you've got 115 pictures that you can include on that record that's going to tell alien life, alien life form about what we are here on planet Earth. Each one of these pictures has to tell a story. So let's take a look at these pictures and let's see what story are you going to get based upon these pictures. See how each one is going to tell a particular story? And we want them to understand what we're all about here on planet Earth based upon these pictures. In addition to that, we also included sounds. Among the sounds that we had was the sounds of the ocean wave pressing across the shore. Babies crying. The haunting sign, uh, the haunting sounds of whales, okay? The humpback whale song that they call it. The sounds of people communicating with each other in different languages. Man, think of how awesome that responsibility was. They had to communicate by sight and sound what we're all about over here on planet Earth so that alien cultures will understand what we're all about. It's amazing, guys. Bam, we're done.